Hello and welcome to our online Sunday service on Sunday, August 23rd. We're so glad that you have joined us, so glad that you have uh, come to uh, join your hearts with ours in worship. We're continuing to gather together online during this pandemic. And today we are looking at Psalm 73. Psalm 73 is one of those psalms that explores a full range of human emotions and responses to God and, and it's just something that's really good for us to explore during this ongoing hard time that we are all facing. Uh, but we are not facing this alone, we are facing this with God and so we gather today as a community to worship the God who sustains us and who holds us together in the midst of all that we are going through, in the midst of our isolation, in the midst of our loneliness, in the midst of our fears. Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father and we come to celebrate that reality. So thanks so much for coming and joining us and, and we're going to begin worship now. You were the word at the beginning One with God the Lord most high Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you are Christ What a beautiful name Beautiful name it is, the name of 
Jesus, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name. Let's pray. Father God, we are yours and you are ours. And the name of Jesus is the greatest name that there is on this planet. And we honor you, God. We, we love you, Lord. Uh, your name is beautiful to us. And that really means that your whole self is beautiful to us, God, and we worship you, we adore you for who you are. You are so good to your people, Lord. You are so good to all people, God. You are the giver of common grace to all, but then to your beloved, uh, the ones you have chosen, the one that you have brought to you uh, to be worshipers of you and followers of Jesus, God. You are, uh, you give us special grace, Father, and uh, we just thank you so much, God, that you are good. Amen. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds, and nothing I desire compares with you. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamonds, and nothing I desire compares with you. Nothing I desire compares with you. One of the phrases in Psalm 73 is, Whom have I in heaven but you? and earth has nothing I desire besides you. Amen. We're going to continue now in worship and we're going to continue with our hearts open to hear from God and to join us as we gather online in worship. Good afternoon friends and brothers and sisters from Church at the Mission where now enter into a time of prayer, and I would like to invite you uh, to pray with me. Um, we'll be going through the four uh, sort of steps of praying. Uh, we'll begin with praise, and then thanksgiving, and then confession, and then supplication, or um, bringing our um, desires and, and the things in our hearts to God. So when we're going through this prayer, I'm going to give a moment of pause, but feel free to also pause the video. Uh, take the time you need to, to praise, to give thanks, uh, to confess, um, and, and to ask God. Um, and then when you're ready, simply press the play button and then continue on to the video. Um, I know we might not be in sync live at the same time, but I do want to encourage you uh, to take this time as we pray uh, as the body together at, at the moment. So I'll lead in prayer, uh, and then I will also close in prayer. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we come before you today knowing that you have today in full control, knowing that our circumstances and our situation are not beyond you because you have called each and every one of us your child. And so, Father, we know that when we praise you, we are not simply um, evoking an emotion but Father, when we praise you, we acknowledge who you are. We acknowledge your character. We acknowledge 
your faithfulness to us. And so we are reminded when we praise you that you are our God. And so at this time, uh, as brothers and sisters, we come before you, showering uh, you with, with praise. And Father Lord, we thank you. Father, we know that with a heart of gratitude, it reorients our hearts towards you. You remind us of the things, the people, and the places that you have gifted us. But more importantly, with a heart of gratitude, we come humbly before you where you're on your throne and we acknowledge the abundance that you give to those who love you. And Father, as we confess today, Father, we, we're confessing individually to you the, the sins to which we have um, committed that have wronged our relationship with you and with one another. But more importantly, Father, we know that in, in our prayers of confession, we are confessing as also corporately, we confessed um, the ways that um, our collective actions uh, may continue to oppress people groups. We confess of our inaction uh, in a world um, that is war-torn. And so, Father, in our confessions, we confess both individually and corporately before you. And Father, we, we know that your breath on us is closer than our own breaths for ourselves. And before we even utter an ask, you already know things in our hearts and our minds that are troubling us, that are worrying us, that are concerning us, in the city and those whom we love. And yet you, Jesus, have said that as your children with faith, let us ask, for we shall receive. And we know that really this, is, this aspect of our prayer is just as formative, um, for we come before you fully who we are, asking. And so, Father, I utter the, the prayers of my ancestors, of my spiritual ancestors who looked to you for help in times of trouble. And as school is about to begin, Father, we, we pray a prayer for many families who are uncertain of how to um, move forward with the uh, giving protocol. We pray uh, for the teachers um, who, who are continuing to um, 
teach and to impart knowledge and to love on their students um, even though there is so much uncertainty and so father i pray at this time the fathers that our eyes be lifted up to the mountains where does our help come from our help comes from the lord the maker of heaven and earth you will not let our foot slip. You will watch over us and will not slumber. Indeed, you who watch over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over us. The Lord is our shade at our right hand. The sun will not harm us by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep us from all harm. He, you will watch over us in our lives. The Lord will watch over our coming and going, both now and forever. Amen. Good afternoon. We are reading from the word of the Lord. The reading of Psalm 73. It's a little bit long. But trust me, it is worth listening to. It's a song of Asaph, and it reads, Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I nearly lost my foothold, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. They have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from common human burdens. They are not plagued by human ills. Therefore, pride is their necklace. They clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. They scoff with malice, with arrogance. They threaten oppression. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. Their mouths lay claim to heaven, and their tongues take possession of the earth. Therefore, their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. They say, how would God know? Does the Most High know anything? This is what the wicked are like, always free of care. They go on amassing wealth, surely in vain. I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been afflicted and every morning brings new punishments. If I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. When I tried to understand all this, it troubled me deeply, till I entered the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their final destiny. Surely you will place them on slippery, slippery ground. You cast them down to ruin. How suddenly they are destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. They are like a dream when one awakens. When you arise, Lord, you will despise them as fantasies. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you, yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, you guide me with your counsel, and afterwards you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart will fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. 
Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge, and I will test, and I will tell all of your deeds. The word of the Lord, Psalm 73. Amen to that. I am so excited about sharing my favorite psalm with you, and that is Psalm 73. If you think the psalms are pretty bold, this one is going to seem super fierce. I love the honesty and the rawness that is found in this psalm. So let's begin. This psalm is attributed to Asaph. You will find Asaph's name various times throughout the book of 1 Chronicles. What we do know about him is that from these passages, he was a worshiper of God. He was gifted in music and was appointed in leading worship. In early passages, he's mentioned as the right-hand man of a higher-ranking worship leader named He-Man. Asaph's specialty seemed to be leading the band of symbols. Later on in first book of Chronicles, we see Asaph appointed as a chief worship leader by David to minister daily before the Ark of the Covenant to bring reverence and worship to the Lord. Since Asaph was a part of the tribe of the Levites, which were chosen as the people who would care for the temple, the sacrifices, and the worship, he also taught and led his children, his family, to be worship leaders. In first Chronicles 25.1, David, together with the commanders of the army, set apart some of the sons of Asaph, Haman, and Jeduthun for the ministry of prophesying accompanied by harps, lyres, and cymbals. I love that in this passage, worship is called prophesying. Prophesying doesn't always signify a message about the future, but it can simply mean proclaiming the truth. Asaph was worshiping God with the truth. Remember in the New Testament how Jesus said that he is looking for worshipers who worship God in spirit and in truth? That's in John 4, 24. And I believe that it is in truth that Psalm 73 was written and sang. These psalms were also songs that were sung by the worship leaders and the people of Israel. Music is very important to God, and we can see this through worship that's appointed to him, and also the fact that the Psalms made it into the Bible. So Psalm 73 is attributed to Asaph. It could be that he wrote it, or it could be that his choir sang it, and maybe somebody else wrote it. But we know that it's attributed to Asaph, so let's delve in. I like to think that this Psalm has two divisions of thought okay so one side deals with observations of the world verses 1 to 15 and how it negatively affects the psalmist and the other half of the psalm verses 16 to 28 deals with grounding himself on the truth of these observations a good friend of mine and I were chatting last week and she tends to be very honest in her reflections about life and she said to me I feel like my heart is so sinful at times and I said to her, why? Why do you feel like that? And she explained that when she looks on her Facebook or Instagram, she sees other people's lives, that they're happy, that they have good paying jobs, and that their social lives appear to be so fun. And she said that sometimes she gets jealous of their lives and wishes she could live like they did. And I really appreciated my friend's honesty, and it reminded me so much of the message that we're going to get into today in Psalm 73. Comparison and jealousy are as old as time. I don't have to tell you that. Because we humans are sinful, we tend to compare ourselves with others and decide that the grass is greener on the other side. Why do you think that God made one of the Ten Commandments to be, Thou shalt not covet? To covet means to want what others have. There's nothing wrong with having motivation or goals to obtain something. But when we begin to minimize our lives because they don't look like others' lives, it can rob us of joy and gratefulness and acceptance of our lives. 
after my friend shared this with me and how she felt, I encouraged her to seek Christ because we begin to focus, when we begin to focus on earthly things, the heavenly purposes in our lives begin to get blurred out. And this is exactly what was happening with the writer of Psalm. He's in the same predicament as my friend and as many of us find ourselves in too. Let's take a look at the first half of the Psalm. Let's start with verse two. But as for me, my feet had almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He admits to getting jealous of unbelievers. I want you to notice that he's not just getting jealous of others or his you know, Christian friends, but he's getting jealous of the ones who don't have a relationship with God. Let's continue. Verse four, they have no struggles. Their bodies are healthy and strong. They are free from common human burdens. They aren't plagued by human ills or sicknesses. Sometimes we can look at Hollywood stars or social media influencers as perfect. We look at their skin glowing, their trim bodies and fashion, and wish our bodies could also be pampered and have it as easy as their lives look. The writer of this psalm was probably going through health issues and comparing his health to others, saying, well, their bodies are perfect. They don't have to deal with overweight, diabetes, asthma, heart disease, and so on and so on. Who knows what he was going through in his own health? They aren't affected by this, he was saying. Therefore, pride is their necklace. Verse 6, they clothe themselves with violence. From their callous hearts comes iniquity. Their evil imaginations have no limits. They scoff and speak with malice, with arrogance. They threaten oppression. Their mouths lay claim to heaven and their tongues take possession of the earth. The writer was also getting jealous of the way these people speak, bragging about themselves and talking like they have power over everyone, and sometimes even using that power over others for evil purposes. A big example of this in our world is police brutality. The power of justice is many times used for injustice, which has created a pattern of victims. This pattern of victims are often people of color killed not because of a wrongdoing, but because of the color of their skin and the fear and the prejudice police feel when they cross their paths. There is no justification for a young black man to be killed when coming back from getting Skittles at a 7-Eleven and he's not even loaded with weapons. There is no reason for a Latino older man to be racially profiled and beaten by people who think he's illegal. There is no reason, there is no right doing when blaming and inflicting violence on Asian people for coronavirus. There is so much misuse of power in this world, done by word, done by deed, and this is not new. All of this has been happening since sin entered the world. The psalmist is observing people and how they use their power to disempower others with their words and their actions. Furthermore, it appeared that they get away with their misuse of power. It's frustrating and it frustrated him. Verse 10, therefore their people turn to them and drink up waters in abundance. They say, how would God know? Does the Most High know anything? The psalmist sees that the people who were misusing their power, their words, and their actions have a group of supporters who praise what they do. What's worse is that the people who do this act like God doesn't exist or would even do anything about how they're treating people. In other words, the psalmist is saying that it looks like these people are getting away with injustice. It's infuriating to see injustice lived out every day. We see people get away with crime, murder, racism, abuse, and greed, and we wonder when are they going to get caught? When are they going to admit they are wrong? When are they going to get punished for what they do? The psalmist is as frustrated as you and I feel about this, and his observations become complaints. Let's look at verse 12. This is what the wicked are like. 
always free of care. They go on amassing wealth, getting rich. Surely in vain, I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long, I have been afflicted and every morning brings new punishments. If I had spoken out like that, I would have betrayed your children. So the psalmist summarizes his observations by stating that the wicked live worry-free and to top it off, they're getting rich doing it. He complains, why have I tried to be so good? Why have I tried to keep the word of God if all of it gets me in bad health, worry, problems, fights with friends, and it gets me poverty? In other words, the psalmist is saying, I don't deserve this. I deserve to have good things. I deserve for good things to happen to me because I'm doing good things in my life. Have you ever felt like this? Like you're entitled to be rewarded for your obedience to God? I think many of us have. I definitely have in the past. And I realized that that attitude of entitlement wasn't right. The psalmist realized that that attitude wasn't right either. And my friend who I was talking to last week realized her attitude wasn't right either. How? How do you go from being in the dumps about life to changing your outlook on life and looking at your attitude and saying, you know what, something's got to change. Let's look at verse 16. When I tried to understand all of this, it troubled me deeply till I entered the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their final destiny. You know what it took for him to turn it all around? It took going into the presence of God. It is in the presence of God that we are able to see things clearly. It's only in prayer and worship and by reading his word that we're able to see things clearly. It's only by congregating with other believers. It is when we are in the presence of God that we are feeding our spirit and not our flesh. When we are desiring to have the things of this world by being jealous of people who have what we want, we are focusing on temporary and earthly things. But being God's presence gets us aligned and aligns ourselves to the eternal. The psalmist says, I couldn't figure all of this out, but it all became clear when I came into your temple and it all became so clear to me. Verse 18, surely you place them on slippery ground. You cast them down to ruin. How suddenly are they destroyed, completely swept away by terrors. They are like a dream when one awakes. When you arise, Lord, you despise them as fantasies. Here's the truth. There will be justice one day. We may not see it here on earth, but we will see it on judgment day. Have you been through an experience where you received unfair treatment? Of course, we all have. God is going to take care of it. Do you think that presidents, politicians, judges, police officers, jail guards, immigration officers, and other people in power and authority will get away with their corruption? Always? No. Listen, you may not see their fall in this world, but surely God will bring about justice. What about the people who have been robbed or killed and no one knows who did it? God knows and he will bring justice. We can trust that God will not let anyone off the hook. He is a fair judge and, and he will deal fairly with all injustice. It doesn't mean that in this world we stop working for justice. No, God has called us to live it out. But if we see someone get away with injustice because of their power, don't worry. God, who is the most powerful, he is going to deal with it. I also want to address that Jesus ta has taken our punishment for our sins on the cross. So all the injustices we have done in the past as believers of Jesus, you are made clean by his blood and your offenses have been covered by him. Then the psalmist takes us into a confession. When my heart was grieved and my spirit embittered, I was a senseless and 
I was senseless and ignorant. I was a brute beast before you. It's my favorite part. You know what? I was a fool before you. Forgive me for thinking your ways aren't the best ways, God. This world is temporary, but you are eternal. You are worth it. I'm sorry I distanced myself from you when I got angry and when I got jealous. This is what the psalmist is saying. And here's where the psalmist recenters himself after the jealousy and frustration and the confession. Verse 23, yet I am always with you. You hold me by the right hand. You guide me with your counsel. And afterward, you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. Suddenly his eyes have turned from world to eternal, right? My heart and my flesh may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is good to be near to God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. It is good to be near to God and to make him my refuge. This is the conclusion of the psalmist. Listen, we all take detours, but are you going what but what are you going to do with that detour? Are you going to go astray and get lost on your way and stay detoured or are you going to go into the presence of God and recenter your life? Bring to him all the things that you're experiencing, the pain, the broken heart, the poverty, the worries, the injustice, the health issues, Bring it to Jesus. Bring it to Jesus right now. Bring it to the foot of the cross. God is a good God and doesn't want you to stay where you are. He accepts us as we are, but doesn't leave us where we are. He gives us hope to grow. Come into his presence now and draw near to him again. He loves you and is waiting for you and will bring restoration to all broken things. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let us continue to worship, lifting up our hearts in praise and adoration to the living God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. Oh, my day. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have been in the goodness of God goodness of God. 
Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. I really hope that you have been encouraged and I pray that God's peace will abide with you this coming week. Actually, let's pray together now. Father God, thank you, Lord, that you meet us as we gather, Lord, and you impart to us understanding. And for each of us, Father, you have highlighted particular things, particular truths about yourself, and perhaps some insights into our, ourselves as well, our own lives, Father. We pray that this coming week we would be uh, a sign of your goodness and grace, Father, that the way we live, the way we conduct ourselves would bring honor and glory to you, Father, so that anyone uh, looking at us, we might be the only Bible that anybody reads, Father, but as they read us and as they read our lives, there is perhaps something there that draws people in that may have a magnetic uh, kind of drawing of individuals wondering why it is that we have the hope that we have, why it is that we have the joy that we have, why it is that even though we are suffering and in hardship along with the entire world, we have a particular spark, a particular enthusiasm because we know, God, that you are good and that you are real. So, God, may your spirit go with us, may your spirit abide with us this week as you send us out in your power to glorify your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Thank you again so much for joining us. We're going to spend some time listening to some announcements right now, and then there's going to be about a 10-minute chunk of time in the chat room where we can connect as well. God bless you. Welcome to our August 23rd announcements. We want to remind you that we have a link tree for our church. That's www.link tr.ee slash church at the mission with no spaces and here you will find our very important links from social media to our latest service if you haven't filled it out already we have a survey that will help us to improve our online church experience so please fill it out and that will provide us with some suggestions good news, we won't have to be online for very long because we hope to open Church at the Mission again in October. Keep in mind, Church will look very different when we meet again to cooperate with health and safety measures. We continue to have prayer on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on Google Meets. You can find the link on our link tree. Bible chats won't take place this Thursday. Stay tuned for updates on when we will resume. Online learning continue to, to take place for YSM Bridges. Tuesdays at 1 p.m. focus on getting ready to go back to work. And Wednesdays are general topics. Uh, we call them Wellness Wednesday workshops. And the last one will be this Wednesday. You can join on YSM Bridges link tree. Link tr.ee slash YSM Bridges. No spaces. We continue to have meals to go Tuesdays and Thursdays from 4 to 5 p.m. at 270 Gerard Street East. Food bank hours are Tuesday to Friday, 10 to 12 and 1 to 3. Remember to bring your client ID card. If you want to speak to a counselor, you can do that uh, as a one-time arrangement or a 12-session arrangement. To make an appointment, please call 416-929-9614, extension 3235. And we want to wish a happy birthday to all of those who had a birthday this month in August. Last week, we celebrated Pastor Matthew's birthday, and we just want to say happy birthday to any of those who had a birthday this last week of August. May God bless you, and we love you. 
Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God All my life All my life you have been faithful Thank you. 